Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight, I ask the question, what are shadow people? Who are they? Are they ghosts? The remnants of what used to be people? Still fading in and out of our reality? Or are they perhaps something darker that we should all try and avoid? Perhaps by the end of the video you will find out. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. This happened many years ago and turned me from a complete skeptic into a firm believer in the paranormal. Although, in truth, it is the only time I ever witnessed anything, it left me shaken, disturbed, and profoundly terrified. The events which I am about to relate to you now are all completely true. This happened when I was 21. After living with my parents until I was 18, I decided to be a big girl and move out on my own. I didn't have the money to go to college, so I opted to get a retail job. It was there where I met Brad. Brad was a kind soul at first, but as most young relationships tend to go, ours didn't last all that long. After a few months of being together, and just a few weeks shy of moving in with him, I found out that he was cheating on me with my good friend Anna Marie. I was disgusted and beyond disappointed, and that put me in a very tricky situation, because I'd already told my landlord that I was definitely going to leave, and he already found someone to take my place in the apartment, which left me very few options. So I told myself I would end up moving back with my parents. My parents only lived about an hour away, but during that time, they were in the process of moving too, as luck would happen. So I resorted for a few weeks to live with a friend before moving back home. I needed a change of scenery anyway. I thought it would do me some good and leave the despised circle of friends that I had been around who were all in favor of Brad and Anna Marie's new relationship and pretty much shunned me aside when he found someone else. But anyway, that's a story for another day. I was crashing with my friend for about two weeks. And one evening while I was going food shopping, I was just coming out at an intersection when a stupid driver going way too fast plowed right into me. I almost thought it was intentional. He swerved out of his lane and smashed me. But whatever, what can you do? Luckily for me, I survived, and I only really sustained injuries to my legs and back. So, my legs were out of commission for a few weeks. I had to move around in a wheelchair at first, and then slowly they put these things on my legs to help me walk a little bit more. It was a painful process, but didn't take all that long. Still, I was in the middle of this big move to go live with my parents. And so, they came and collected me from the hospital, when I was semi-mobile, and took me to their new house. Things still needed to be unpacked, but I wasn't really much help to begin with. From the outside, it was an absolutely beautiful home. The house that my parents had always talked about. Big, spacious, airy and seemingly, from the outside, beautiful. There were gardens surrounding it, and lots of space for my parents to work on their personal projects, as they were going to be reaching retirement age fairly soon. However, just because the house was beautiful to look at, didn't mean that it was perfect. From the moment I stepped foot inside that house, something felt off. Something felt dark. 
There was this persistent, eerie feeling. It was mostly confined to the downstairs, as I got a beautiful room upstairs with an ensuite and a veranda, and I always felt fine and comfortable there. But in the mornings, when I would slowly make my way down the stairs for breakfast, I'd be overwhelmed by this feeling of negativity. A characteristic about the house itself is that it didn't have many windows. I always assumed it was because not a lot of natural light could be let in, and made every effort to open windows and let lights in, open curtains and stuff like that, as often as I could. But it never seemed to do much, or lift the dark aura which I felt. Anyway, this is when things started to get weird. I'd been living there all of two days, and it was on my third day in the morning when I got up, and realised that the weekend was over. Both my parents had gone to work. So there I was, alone in the house. They knew that I was just going to recover and chill with them for a few months. So I had free reign, and everything was cool. After slowly making my way down the unfamiliar stairs, I sat on a bar stool and started pouring myself a bowl of cereal. I was just absentmindedly thinking some stuff, probably being angry about my ex-boyfriend. But it was all quickly dismissed when I heard something downstairs. It was a bit like rustling, like someone scrunching up tissue paper. That's the best way I can put it. I wasn't really sure what it was at first. And then as the sound persisted, I was convinced the house must have some kind of rodent problem. I am profoundly grossed out by rodents and immediately wanted to call my mum. But that's when I heard something else. I then heard footsteps from downstairs. I hadn't been to the basement before. That's where my mum and dad had put their washing machine and the like and other big equipment. They were also big on skiing, so that's where all their ski stuff went. And no doubt, loads of boxes were just down there waiting to be unpacked. I was a bit confused. I looked out the window, and both their cars were not in the driveway. At this point, I started to get a bit confused. If they're not in the driveway, who the hell was downstairs? Now, I'm a rational person, and thought to myself, it's either an intruder, or I'm hearing things. Or maybe, they invited someone over and forgot to tell me. I looked around the kitchen. There were no notes. That was quickly dismissed. My parents were big on notes. Whenever there was something important they had to communicate, a note would pretty much always be left on the kitchen counter, just to let me know of anything important. But this was not the case. My mind instantly jumped to the worst possible scenario, because the footfalls were self-evident, and I could hear them pacing around downstairs, slowly and carefully. I thought to myself, am I sure this isn't just in my head? And thought that I may as well call the police just to be sure. But something told me that maybe I should check it out first. I was a bit scared of calling the police, to be honest. I know it's silly, but at that age, I just didn't want to seem like a bother. Your typical cliché. They come in, the girl's a little bit scared, they go down thinking she heard footfalls. All of the time, it was just a rodent, or maybe the wind. So I decided that I would try and go down. In my state, as best I could, I opened the door and made my way down the stairs slowly. I got about three steps down, and could still hear the footfalls. I couldn't see though, because of the way that the basement was made. And by the time I got to the fifth step down, the sound stopped. I looked around. There was no one. There was nothing. There were things in the basement, of course. But nothing that could logically explain where that sound had originated from. I kept going down the stairs, now feeling a bit braver, seeing that there was nothing there that should really make me scared. Nothing. 
There are a few corners which I looked round, but there were no discernible places to hide within that basement. I go back upstairs, feeling a little bit weird. Maybe there was a rat hiding behind a box or something like that. And make a mental note to tell my dad when he gets home to put down some traps. Because I hate rats. When I get back up to the top of the stairs, I continue eating my cereal. Again, absent-mindedly thinking. When all of a sudden, the basement door slams shut. I'd left it a crack open, just to be able to hear the footfalls if they were to return. But when I heard the door slam, I nearly dropped my bowl. I instantly took my bowl of cereal and tried to get upstairs as quickly as I could. I was scared. But, being the rational mind, I tried to tell myself that there was a window open somewhere and that the wind must have just blown the door closed. So, once my cereal had been finished and I calmed down, I sweeped the house, slowly and carefully, and found nothing. During the course of the next few weeks, the footstep sounds persisted. They weren't always at the same time. Sometimes I'd be hearing TV, and I'd hear them downstairs. I'd always just turn the volume up, just to try and drown out the sound. But I knew in the back of my mind that it was still there, and that I wasn't imagining it. My dad laid traps, but nothing. No rodents were found. He told me that he was sure there weren't any, that he never heard anything, and that I must be imagining it. He said surely it's the wind. He's rational and logical as well, and tried dismissing it as quickly as I told him. Whatever. It was by this point that my foot had started to recover. I had been looking for jobs in the local area, and hadn't found anything yet. I was home alone again, and my parents really appreciated the fact that I was doing all the laundry, as it really helped my parents out, so that my dad didn't have to do it when he got home, exhausted, and I really didn't like feeling like a burden on my parents. So I was collecting all the dirty clothes, and was shoveling them into the machine. Just as I was pouring the liquid, I swear I heard something behind me. I turn around and don't see anything, so I'm quite content. Just as I start walking up towards the door though, in the very corner, I see what looks like a shadow, but there's nothing to cast it. It's tall, slightly taller than what a person should be I'd say, maybe six to seven feet. The shadow is dark, and almost looks like it's made up of squiggly lines that a child's drawn and mushed together. I don't really know how else to describe it, but I stood there paralysed in fear, unable to walk or move, just seeing what this thing would do. After staring at it for what felt like an eternity, I plucked up the courage to make a step. The moment I inched my foot forward to investigate to see if it was being cast by something, the shadow moved at an impossible speed up the stairs. In my panic, I didn't know whether I should try and leave the basement, or if I should just stay there. I was absolutely bewildered. Had my eyes just played a trick on me? Or did I really witness a creature of shadow dart up the stairs? I ran. I ran all the way up the stairs and slammed the door shut. I was sweating. I was nervous. And I could feel my heart beating at a mile a minute. All that I knew is that I wanted to run upstairs and hide in my room. So that's what I did. I sat there for what felt like hours before I felt comfortable enough to go back downstairs. I did a little sweep of the house feeling terrified the whole time, and found nothing. I didn't really know what to do after that. I plucked up the courage to speak to my mum about it, who, although sceptical, is a bit more open-minded than my dad when it comes to these kind of things. I didn't really know how to express it to her without sounding ridiculous or crazy, 
But the more I spoke to her about it, the more she said that she'd felt weird since moving in here. And even though when she was looking at the house before buying it, she felt a little bit strange, she told me that she thought the house was just too perfect. And at the low, low price that they were selling it for, they just had to buy it. As the conversation progressed, in my mind it solidified why the people who were selling it were willing to take such a hit on the original price. I decided after that, that maybe I should look for a job elsewhere and try and get back on my own two feet. It wasn't before long that I managed to save enough money while living at my parents' house with my new job to try and get a place of my own again. There wasn't much more that happened after that first event. I never saw the shadow creature again, but I did hear it stomping in the basement. I was never sure why it was confined there, but it scared the shit out of me. And let's just say whenever I did the laundry, I always went down there incredibly scared, but always tried to put on a brave face. I'm glad that I don't live there anymore. As it would happen, after I moved out, it only took my parents three months before deciding to sell the place. One night I received a call from my aunt's house. It was my dad, telling me that he witnessed something that he cannot logically explain and that they were staying with his sister until the house got sold. My dad never wanted to speak about it with me, but my mother ended up revealing it some years later. Basically, they were watching TV downstairs. It was quite late at night. They kept hearing something downstairs in the basement. So my dad, feeling pissed, decided to go check it out, convinced that it was a rodent as well. Of course, all the stuff that I'd been saying to them months before had echoed in their mind when they heard things downstairs. My dad grabbed his gun and went downstairs to check. My mum was at the top of the hallway looking down just to be sure. When at that moment, they both saw a shadow dart past them. Not just my dad, but my mum. It ran past my dad on the stairs and past my mum on the open door. They turned around to see where it went, but it was gone. After that, they didn't even bother packing. My dad grabbed his keys and drove away. It's good to know that it wasn't just me and that there was certainly something in that house. As for what, I cannot say. I tried looking up some public records, but couldn't find anything. No one died in the house as far as I'm aware, and the previous owners didn't have it for very long. All things considered, it was also a fairly new house at the time, so it didn't really leave much time for it to be haunted. It's one of those things I'll never truly understand. But let's just say, it really shifted the way that me and my parents saw the world after that. In a way, I'm glad it opened my mind, but it did leave me with some nasty memories and a sense of fear and dread that I will never forget. Not where I live now, but I used to live in an apartment style residence housing when I went to university. I was an RA, and stayed around another three to four days after the last day of school to assist with move out. The whole end of year thing, plus a big RA party the next night. All my roommates, as well as almost everyone in the buildings had moved out for the summer. At the time, I was the only one of maybe five or six people in the building, and only one of those being on my floor. At 3.37 in the morning, I woke up with a sudden start, and remember seeing the time on the clock across from the room. I wasn't able to move for some reason. The room was dark, but I was still able to see an amorphous black shadow on the door of my room, near the foot of the bed. It stayed there, with me being unable to move or scream and then suddenly moved up to the roof across my room, and then literally disappeared out my window. 
I slowly felt my muscles start to loosen up, and was suddenly very aware of being very short of breath, as if I'd been holding my breath for a very long time. When I could, I immediately got up, and spent a good 30 minutes convincing myself that what I experienced was just a dream, and then was finally able to go back to sleep, albeit with the lights on. The next morning, I kept thinking about what happened, and that it had all been a dream. I was feeling much better, and actually forgot about it later that day. That evening, I called my parents who live about six hours away. My mother is a very religious and devout Christian, although I am not. Halfway through the call, my mum suddenly asks me what I was doing last night. She said that she had, randomly, woke up the previous night, and had the sudden urge to pray for me. She immediately started to, and after about 15 minutes she said the feeling went away, and that she was peaceful, and went back to sleep. I asked her what time that happened, and my experience suddenly flashed back into my mind. Her answer? 3.38 a.m. I live with my grandparents in an old farmhouse that they've owned for 40 something years. Sometimes, things will go bump in the night. You know, the usual odd noises. Lights coming on by themselves, doors being left closed and found open. Your typical run-of-the-mill house spooks, I guess you could say. So my bedroom wall is the same wall that connects to the downstairs stairwell, and you can clearly hear when anyone goes up and down the stairs. Generally, I don't find this alarming, but when I'm home alone, it's a fairly frequent occurrence to still hear someone coming up the stairs. I never thought anything of it, until one day. I was asking my dad if he ever experienced anything odd while growing up here. He spent his childhood living in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. He told me about this recurring nightmare he had as a child nearly every night, where he'd be in bed sleeping, and then start hearing someone whisper his name. He'd get up, go to the bedroom door, and slowly crack it open. Upon opening the doors, he'd see a figure of a man, entirely a black shadow, standing at the bottom of the stairs. In this dream, he'd always freak out and shut the door, only to get anxious and open it to check again. Every time he'd look, the figure would be a few steps closer. He always woke up right before the man reached the top of the stairs. Ever since he told me that, I haven't been able to shake the creepy feeling I get when I hear the footsteps on the stairs when I'm alone. Maybe it was more than a dream. As a kid, I used to have awful nightmares every night, as well as the occasional night terror. It had actually gotten so bad that I never slept for more than four hours a night. I think it was thanks to a mix of the sleep deprivation and general paranoia that I began seeing things out of the corner of my eyes, and usually there'd be nothing there when I do a double take. Once though, while I was walking through a hallway in my house one night, I turned, and there was actually something there. It was tall, and looked like a smoky, wispy silhouette, except for the yellow eyes, which looked very solid and bright in the low light. I never felt the same level as dread as I did in that moment. I used to be religious, and I didn't know this until years later, but my church had actually told my father that something with yellow eyes was tormenting me. It made my skin crawl when he told me, because I never actually told him about it. At some point, it stopped. I grew up and mostly forgot about it. But a few months ago, I took my preteen sister 
to see a midnight showing of a horror film. And afterwards, we began talking about our weird and creepy experiences and tried to rationally explain them. Mostly, everything had some sort of logical cause until she told me that when she was younger, she used to see shadow people out of the corner of her eyes too. I laughed and told her it was funny because I'd seen some as well. It stopped being funny when she told me about how she was watching TV on her house during broad daylight while she stayed home sick from school. She was home alone when she heard something coming down the hallway. She turned and saw a wispy tall silhouette with shining yellow eyes. I had a rough time sleeping that night. So I lived with my mum for a few years before moving back to my dad's place, which is also my childhood home. At my mother's place, she and I both regularly heard footsteps going through the house, usually at night. Just someone walking around the apartment, then stopping in front of our bedrooms. We slept with the doors open. Sometimes there were voices too, talking to us. The next morning we'd ask each other if it were the other. Nope. The house also had a problem, where we had a wedding photograph of my mum's great grandma. And whenever mum tried to hang it on the wall, it would fall down. Permanent glue was involved at some point, and it just kept falling. Different location, it'd fall again. We'd assume it was my great-grandma haunting us, and that she personally didn't like that picture. Then, this house. When I was a kid, I regularly had a tall black figure standing in my room. A shadow person, if you will. It scared the living crap out of me. It passed by one room and my study room. It was a five bedroom house with three people and everyone had their own study. And when I looked again, it was gone. It also used to stalk me in the shower. My parents used to tell me to just ignore it and it would go away, which definitely did not help. My dad's girlfriend managed to send it away during a few years I lived with my mum. Though there's still something nasty on the first floor, which makes you feel really unwelcome and constantly stared at. Oh, and when I moved back here a few months ago to live with my dad, I got an attic room. First few nights I got terrified by hearing footsteps on the roof, as well as strange noises. When I asked my dad, it turned out there was a pigeon nest under the roof and just above my window. My siblings and I were on our couch watching TV. While our parents were at work, and pretty much what happened is that there was a loud slam and we looked over towards the hallway doors. They were slamming shut by themselves, one by one leading up to the room where we were. We would run outside and back inside, only to have the doors open by themselves and slam back shut again. This is an early memory, but I know what happened. I would wake up and lights would flicker on and off. And when I would look over at the light switch, no one would be there. So I would go back to sleep. One night, I was confident to myself that I would catch my siblings messing with me. And so I raced down to see the light switch moving by itself and stopped around the time I got there. I was looking around, trying to see where someone was, when I saw a solid black mass move across the room, and then I heard a knock at the door. It was midnight. I went to open the door, not really thinking since I was little. I had my hand on the door and decided to look out the window first, only to see the tall pitch black figure standing there. It was at night and looked like a void. I ran upstairs and legit would stay in my room when the lights would flicker. Over the years I would see more and continued to see more shadow people. I just wish they'd leave me be.
I had an encounter with a shadow person in the spring of 2005. I'll describe it as accurately as I can. A friend of mine and I were talking in my living room. I suppose I should mention, although I don't know if it had anything to do with it, my father was in the hospital at the time, and he passed away from cancer a few months after this happened. I was standing in the kitchen, and he was in the adjoining room. There was a bar and a bar stool in between us that was connected to a wall that was on my left and his right. Behind him, a light hung from the ceiling, and on the wall in front of him to his right, or my left, a calendar hung that I could not see, since it was on the other side of the wall. I was in the middle of talking, when very suddenly, I heard the calendar that was in front of him and between us fall off the wall. And from where it was, at the corner, where the bar met the wall, what looked like a black shadow with no definite form, flew up towards us and across the room, right between us. It flew past the light that was hanging from the ceiling, which made the room darker for half a second. It looked almost like it was made of smoke. Kind of wispy, I guess. But it was more solid and black like a shadow. It looked like nothing I'd ever seen before in person. However, I'd seen a few videos on ghost documentaries over the years that show almost exactly what it looked like, which I now assume to be genuine considering what we saw. It then flew into the wall and disappeared. We were both shocked and didn't know what to say to each other. He then said that he noticed it a second before it flew up and the calendar fell, and that it looked like the figure of a tiny person, only a couple of feet tall. And he said it seemed to be crouching down next to the bar and in front of the calendar, apparently peeking around the corner at me while I was talking. He said that the instant he looked directly at me, the calendar fell and turned into that formless black mass and flew up from between us. He's from down south, and I'll never forget his tone of voice with his heavy southern accent, shouting something like, that looked like a dang black hand towel flying across the room. We had no birds or anything else that could have even looked similar to what we saw, and it was not a shadow being cast from outside, since it was definitely three-dimensional and in between us. Plus, the fact that shadows can't knock down calendars. Considering how clearly we saw it flying across the light and into the wall, there's just nothing that could possibly account for it other than something paranormal. What it was exactly, I can't say. Considering how clearly we saw it flying across the light and into the wall, there's just nothing that could possibly account for it other than something paranormal. What it was exactly, I can't say, but the fact that he said it was peeking at me like that, and then flew away when it was caught, and the fact that it was a black shadow, made me think it's not a good entity. We've talked about it from time to time over the years, going over every detail to make sure we both agree on what happened. I've never seen anything remotely similar, before or since. My theory is that, for whatever reason, it did not notice my friend at first, and maybe assumed I was alone. I would never have noticed it, if he did not look at it, apparently causing it to fly up like that. From my perspective, it would have just been a tiny portion of shadow peeking around the corner. This makes me wonder, if maybe it had been watching me from around corners all along, and it just took another person being there at the right time to discover it. This gives me chills, because I lived in that house for 10 years, and always had minor experiences like hearing soft footsteps going down the hallway, onto the thick carpet towards the open door of my bedroom at night, or having doors mysteriously open and close. I would always try to explain these things away though, 
so that I could actually sleep. I've never had another experience as intense as this one before or since then. And if it wasn't for my friend being there and seeing exactly the same thing, I would really question if I actually saw what I did. One evening, back when I was in high school, my parents left me with the house for one evening. No biggie. I've been home alone at night plenty of times. So I'm watching TV until I decide to hit the sack. As I'm turning off the lights and making my way towards my room, I reach the hallway leading to both my room and my sister's. As soon as I hit the switch behind me, to turn off the lights to my kitchen downstairs and turn back towards my bedroom. I see a shadow figure in front of me at the end of the hall that's about six feet. I'm staring at this in complete shock for about three to four seconds. And when I try to rub my eyes to see if this is really happening, it's still there. And the figure darts off into my sister's room faster than any human could go. I felt like I was zapped, and fell to my knees out of shock briefly. I quickly got up though, and looked for my dog, to make sure he was okay, and if he detected this, because under any other circumstances, if anyone got within 10 feet of our house, our dog would alert everyone immediately by loud barking. He was in my parents' bedroom, which is basically in the opposite corner of the house where I had seen this figure and he had his eyes looking at me with a worried look. I shut the door and locked it, and slept in my parents' room that night. I know people have talked about seeing shadow figures before in paranormal investigations, and I know others sometimes say that you see things when you're tired, so I don't know for sure, but it looked real. Let me start by telling you that I have always been sensitive this particular story is from when I moved in with my now husband. We lived with his parents as they needed some help. We had a little room in the basement. I would tell you it was cosy, but that would be a lie. I will set the scene so that you can get a feel for yourself. The house was out in the middle of nowhere. And when I say middle of nowhere, I mean all you can see when you stand on the porch is fields and mountains, nothing else. It was a small farmhouse, two rooms, one bathroom and an unfurnished basement. My father-in-law put up sheets of pegboards to make three rooms in the basement. Note as it is a pegboard, you can see from one room to the other if the light is right. Anyway. One was an office for him, sharing a wall with a room he made for us, as he put the walls up for a laundry room. The house gave me a creep factor that I can't even explain. It could be because my husband informed me that anyone who has lived in that house has somehow died, and it's true. We as a family were quickly looking for another house to move into. My first week there, we spent upstairs in the living room. The second night, I kept hearing talking and banging from the kitchen. So after about 20 minutes, I got up to see if maybe his dad was up and needed something. Not only was no one there, but every cupboard was open, and there's no way anyone could have left before I made it up, as they'd have had to walk through the living room. I closed them all, and tried not to think about it. We moved to our room, and all is good for about a month. One day, I noticed this awful feeling when I walked down the stairs by the old coal chute. Now, it's used to store Christmas presents, and no matter how hard I try, I can't shake the feeling of being watched every time I walk down the stairs. It was a very sinister feeling. It's now four months later, and we had just shut off the TV for the night, and we were just talking. Our bed was facing the wall that we shared with his dad's office. We had that all familiar feeling of being watched and stopped talking. We both just look at the pegboard 
and we could see two black shadows walking back and forth in his room, and it creeped the hell out of us. A week later, on the night of the 4th of July, my sister-in-law, who was staying the night, busts into the room and tells us that his dad was having a heart attack. He passed away that night in the house, before the ambulances could even make it to us. The night of the funeral, I was holding my broken-hearted husband. When we heard the sound of the back door open, and heavy work boots walk across the floor above us, it was just like the sound his dad would make when he came in. The most messed up part was two weeks after he passed, we found a house to live in, where we fully moved out to in three days. So like I said, everyone had a death in that house. Our neighbour, who is about two miles away, is a friend slash co-worker of my mum's, and he told her about the deaths, as he had lived by the house his whole life. The family before us had two teens who were backing out of the driveway. Her car was hit by a semi-truck hauling potatoes. Before that was also a heart attack. Family before that suicide. Before that was a baby lost to SIDS. The family before had a kid who died of scarlet fever, some to tuberculosis. The house was built in 1947. I'm not sure what happened to the original owner of the house, or what they did to make the house so evil. I just know I'll never step foot in it again, and hope to never see another shadow person in another room. My cousin, who was six months older than me, had developed a kind of cancer at the age of 15. And because of this, we moved to her town to be closer to her. The move was rushed, and we literally took the first place we could. The apartment was pretty good size, but it was very dark inside, as the only windows were at the front of the living room, and in the back, where the bedrooms were. These were old apartments, so there were obvious problems with it. About two weeks after moving in, the pipes burst, flooding most of the house and ruining a lot of the still unpacked boxes. Okay, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was weird. My mum was very kind and let me have the master bedroom that had a small bathroom attached. This room was, for lack of a better word, weird. It was the only bedroom out of the two with a lock on it. The bathroom lock was busted. Actually, the whole handle was busted. Even locked, it would pop open with the slightest push. And the closet had a strange hatch on the floor. I was always afraid to open it, even when we moved out. I think it was anywhere from three to six months. We lived there before my cousin passed away. And that night, we had stayed with my aunt to keep her company. The morning after we went home and I woke up to take a nap. I was still in shock, I guess. And during my nap, I had a very strange dream. There were no details. I was asleep in bed and I heard knocking on the front door. I heard garbled voices that sounded like my uncle and grandfather talking, and then I woke up. After that, strange things started happening. I would see shadows out of the corner of my eye, and of course, when I turned to look, they'd be gone. I also had a small nest of wall spiders call my room their home. I woke up to one running across my face, and after, I accidentally killed it when I turned over. And after I accidentally killed it, I turned over, and on the wall right beside my head was a second. I ended up killing four wolf spiders over the next month. At one point, I started feeling very uncomfortable in my bedroom, so I started sleeping in the living room. I had started staying up extremely late, something I wish I could still do, and I always had the worst feelings of being watched while I tried to sleep. Over time, we ended up getting three cats, which I loved dearly. 
one day while I was on my laptop. A cupboard that I had left open for the cats to play in suddenly slammed shut, startling me. I knew for a fact it was not any of the cats, as one of them was in the living room eating food, while the other two had been playing, also in the living room. My mother had been taking a nap as well at the time. Then about a year later, the fire ants came. For almost the entire time we lived there before, we had a problem with sugar ants. The cute little ants that are so easy to take care of. However, those went away, and we soon encountered their evil cousins from hell. I didn't even realise they were fire ants at the time, because they were so small, and I'd never actually seen any before. Those suckers were scary. They could peel themselves off duct tape. Like, what the actual hell? That's terrifying. And their stings were horrible. And the landlords were absolutely no help at all. The most they did for us was give us the poison to take care of it ourselves. These ants ended up giving me a staph infection on the stomach. And I still have a scar from it. It turned out they were starting to nest on the couch I slept on. Because of this, the doctor put me on antibiotics, as well as some painkillers which made me sleep a lot. At the time I didn't realise I was taking painkillers, I was just so out of it. I was pretty naive when I was younger, and this inadvertently started an addiction to painkillers. I won't go into details there though, as it's not something that I'm proud of. So, fast forward, we'd been there about two years at this point, and we decided enough was enough and began looking for a new place to move out to. But at this point, I was in a very deep depression, and did not want to put the energy to move. So I fought the whole way, and bless my mother, she put up with my bad mood so much. After about three weeks before we moved out, our kitchen had become infested by some kind of black garden spider. There were easily two dozen under the counters, and it was disgusting all the time, because I had a horrible fear of spiders. And exactly three days before our move, another pipe broke. This time besides my mum room. I think it was a sewage pipe, because the smell was unbearable. And this whole time, I started getting darker and darker thoughts, and honestly felt like I would have a stroke. All the while, I would still be seeing the shadow people out of the corner of my eye. I wonder if they resided there, and all the ill omens that occurred were because of them. Perhaps I'll never know. But after our move, things started to calm down. And I can safely say that our lives got much, much better. And I can also proudly say that of August 14th, 2018, I am one year clean from drugs. So, I rented out this small building. Think mother-in-law suite, but a bit larger. In Florida, for about a year. It was super old. The main house was over a hundred years old. It had upgrades, more buildings added and demolished. But this property had history to it. Anyway, we lived out there alone. Weird things would happen from time to time. Like my coffee maker being off when I'd leave it on my alarms being unplugged overnight, my shoes being on the other side of the room, etc. But the creepiest was the shadow. Every night without fail, there'd be this shadow in my doorway. It scared the ever-loving shit out of me the first couple of nights, though. But eventually, I realised it wasn't going to come in any further. Just to be safe, though, I waited until my landlord and his family had left the property for the day for privacy reasons, and sat down on my bed to talk to pretty much whatever was listening. I told it that I respected its right to be here, and wouldn't do anything to harm or hinder it. It was here first, and I'd be leaving soon anyway. I didn't mean to be a bother, but for the time being, if he wouldn't mess with me, I wouldn't mess with him. And what do you know? The Sharon wasn't there at night. I stayed up because that honestly creeped me out even more. But eventually I went to bed and was fine. 
I never saw the shadow again, and my things stayed where I left them from then on. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you will enjoyed tonight's video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like, leave a comment with your thoughts, as it goes a long way. And don't forget to subscribe. But the question is, why should you subscribe? Well, it's actually because I post content every single night. So, there'll be stories waiting for you without fail. And if that's not a reason to subscribe and press the little bell icon, I don't know what is. So why not go ahead and do that? Also, another great piece of news, I finally submitted the first part of the audiobook. You have to do like a teaser part, I guess, 15 minutes, and then you submit the whole thing. It's all done, so once the first 15 minutes get approved, I'll be able to probably upload the rest. And then, all that they need to do is verify, and we're good to go. So I'm hoping at some point early next week, you're going to have a really awesome audiobook narrated by me to listen to. Oh, and I also posted a really funny picture of Pandora eating avocado today. I think she didn't like it. She kind of just had it in her mouth and gave us this blank stare like, what do I do with this in my mouth? She's eaten other food just fine. But avocado? Don't think she's a big fan. Anyway, it's a really funny picture. Go to Twitter and check it out if you want. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.